Some big news this week for the tens of thousands of people exposed to the opioid crisis. A doctor and former addict has launched a proposed billion-dollar class action suit against some of the biggest drug makers in Canada. And that's not all. For the first time, Health Canada now says it is considering taking action too. In a statement to the Weekly this week, it says... The government of Canada has not closed the door on taking legal action against opioid manufacturers for past inappropriate marketing practices. The proposed suit from the doctor alleges 28 drug companies, including Purdue Pharmaceutical and Apotex, engaged in a pattern of false, reckless and deceptive marketing. It claims drug makers recommended opioids for minor injuries when anti-inflammatories would have been more effective and failed to warn doctors and the public about the risks of addiction. Dr. Daryl Gebbian, he is the lead plaintiff in this case, and he became addicted to opioids when he took Percocet for a minor sports injury. And then those pills quickly led to a full-blown addiction that destroyed his life. I still don't appreciate how close to dying I came. My wife, ex-wife, now do she does. She found me in a shower stall with the water not running and passed out green, not, not breathing. Uh, basically, breath steps away from, from dying. I did have a near fatal. Gebbian, he lost his medical license. He she went to jail so for drug trafficking and forging prescriptions, and he lost custody and of his children. Team. Now, he's hoping that this case will help others. But get this, in the United States, several drug companies have been taken to court over several years now. Top executives at Purdue, the makers of OxyContin, admitted to misleading doctors about the drug's risk of addiction. They had to pay out $600 million. But in Canada, well, 20,000 Canadians have died from opioid-related overdoses, 10,000 in just the past three years. But here, there are no judgments, no multi-million dollar fines. So Health Canada, well, last year, it asked drug companies to be more cautious in how they market opioids. But those new guidelines are voluntary. And until now, there had been no public indication the government was even considering legal action. Joining me to talk about all this is Adam Tunnell. He's one of the lawyers behind the proposed class action suit. So, Adam, this is quite something. This is possibly a landmark suit with $1.1 billion. That is a threat that would get people's attention. What's been the reaction since you announced that you're going forward with this? Uh, it, it's really blown the doors off, uh, to be frank. I've been involved in a number of these class actions in the past. We've never seen an outpouring. So like how many this. people could this apply to? Hundreds of thousands of Canadians from coast to coast to coast in every single one of our communities. So what does he want out of this? What is he hoping will happen? I think he's hoping that we'll finally get enough attention that this practice stops, that uh, opioids aren't prescribed for minor conditions like his minor injury that ended up derailing his life. He's a fighter um, and he cares deeply about this. He lost so much uh, and instead of letting it beat him, he came out the other side and is fighting just as hard as he can to try and make a change. I'm just trying to figure out why we, we saw the U.S. government actually proceed with, with a, a case against the opioid makers mm -hmm. in the States. There's been nothing here. You look at Health Canada and, and basically they've said to the drug makers, you need to be more careful in what you tell doctors. Mm -hmm. Is that, that seems to be it. it. It's not enough from our perspective. Uh, going after a corporation's bottom line is the best way to change their behavior, and that's what this lawsuit is about. Reading through your, your filing, I mean, it, it's quite something. You lay out basically how the, the drug makers were, you suggest, uh, misleading uh, medical journals, misleading doctors, misleading patient groups, and patients have been dying. Um, and Health Canada, what are they doing? This has been going on for years. It has. It's been going on for decades. It's the largest uh, health emergency of my lifetime. Are they doing enough? <laughs> that's a great question. Um, that, that's something for our politicians and for regulators to decide. Um, we're, we are not pursuing Health Canada in this lawsuit. We're pursuing the people who reaped billions of dollars in profits on the backs of tens of thousands of Canadian deaths. Uh, it's our position that the moral culpability lies with those who profited from this epidemic. It's really a manufactured epidemic. This, there was not a health crisis that these drugs sought to cure. Uh, this was an epidemic that they invented. It's, it's surprising that the manufacturers haven't patented the epidemic for all the work they did manufacturing it. What took so long? 
<laughs> Great question. Um, we have to do our due diligence. We've known that this was a crisis for years. From our perspective, we're David going up against Goliath. Uh, and if you're going to do that, you better make sure you've got a slingshot. So we had to do our due diligence. Will you be able to prove what's been shown in the United States, that there were lies by uh, corporate executives about the effects of the drug? I, I think we'll be able to, yes. When you look at how readily these drugs were prescribed and the fact that the drug manufacturers were not just talking to the doctors, but they were talking to med students and running uh, educational programs for the medical students on pain management. Uh, there's no way our doctors would be prescribing these medications if they were properly informed of the risks associated with them and their complete lack of efficacy with respect to some conditions. You know that the drug companies are going to fight back. They're going to say, well, if people abuse it, then, you know, that, that, then they're the ones who have made the error. Yep. That's why I went to law school, was to fight with them. Um, I'm thrilled to have that kind of fight. We're, we feel like we're strong on the merits, and, and we look forward to having this case tried on its merits. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for having me, and thank you for helping to shed light on this issue. Adam Tunnell. Just this week, five more states in the U.S. have announced they'll be pursuing class actions against Purdue Pharma. We reached out to several companies named in the suit, and only Purdue responded, saying, as of this time, we have not been served, and as such, cannot comment.